Hello my friends, my name is Ben and welcome to the world of Dreamscaper. Dreamscaper is a roguelite blending elements from brawlers, top-down shooters, and dungeon crawlers. Every dungeon you face will be an ever-changing world that is never the same every time you play it, and will present you with a multitude of unique challenges and events. You will play as Cassidy, you will dive into her subconscious, and take on the surreal nightmares that she wrestles with in order to save her from a dark fate. In today's video, I'll be taking you through the tutorial, the first level, and also the first boss. I'll be giving you some additional tips and advice that I have gained from playing the game. Let's get into it. Alright, you're in the world of Dreamscaper. Hit play so we can get started. I had a save from a previous update, but it's obsolete now, so I'm going to be making a new game and starting a fresh journey alongside all of you. This is an introduction area where we meet Cassidy and one of the many nightmares that she'll be facing on this journey. Once we go through this door, we will initiate a cutscene, and I will see you guys on the other side. Okay, I have returned. I want you to be as familiar and masterful with the game mechanics as possible, and of course, that's what the purpose of any decent tutorial is, so let's go through it and get you sorted. The first room is just movement control. Easy enough. Once you figure out how to move, you'll already be going places. Next room, we are introduced to our melee weapon. Pretty basic, one thing you should try and learn is the combo system. Every time you strike with your melee weapon, your character will flash. Time your attacks correctly with the flashes of your character and you will do more damage. So try and do that whenever you can. This next room will introduce us to our ranged weapon. Ranged weapons are awesome, but try not to spam them as, as you'll notice, they will drain that meter in the top left. We'll also be getting a dodge, which is great for, of course, evading enemy attacks and going through those red zones, as you can see there. The next room gives us our shield, and by holding the shield button, we can block attacks, and by timing the shield button just as an attack hits us, we can parry it back at the attacker. Lucid attacks are abilities that alter the world in some way or another. They come in many different shapes and sizes and are very powerful. The most powerful ability of all, however, is the Lucid Awakening, which allows you to freeze time and have full control of the world for a brief period of time. However, use this ability sparingly as it will not regenerate as quickly as the others. These are destructibles, just whack them and you will find items inside. It's as simple as that. These different colored destructibles can only be destroyed with bombs as you can see. Bombs of course can be gathered by destroying destructibles. Sometimes they're simply given to you, but either way, if you want to destroy those things, you need bombs. 
This room teaches you how to manipulate the map of Dreamscaper to go wherever you want. Simply press the keybind or button of your choice, it'll enlarge the map, select the square or room that you want to go to, and you will immediately teleport there. And that's that. That's the tutorial out of the way. Once we wake up in the dreaming world, I will meet you there. All right, you're asleep. One thing you should know is that every level will be different every time you play it. The one thing that stays the same is the first room or area. As you can see, we have multiple places that we can go, but we want to find the boss, but we don't know where they are. So pick a direction you want to go and begin exploring. And I go in this direction. You can see destroyable objects that just require our melee weapon and that require bombs. You've got a multitude of enemies to face, but yeah, it's easy. It's not too bad. Destroy the destructibles, get what I can. We get some currencies and we don't have a bomb. I'm going to dismantle this health potion because I don't need it. Remember to do that with everything you don't need. And here we can see that there's another destructible object that requires a bomb. Here's hoping I get one soon, and look at that, we just got a bomb. And another bomb. So I can destroy this destructible object, and I can go back to the previous room. And you can actually see in the top right that that room with the destructible object that I missed is still there with that icon. So let's go back and destroy that and see what we get. Not much, but hey, you never know what you're going to get, so it's always worth trying to see what's inside. We're gonna unlock this and get an upgraded melee weapon. There are many different melee weapons and sometimes they'll come with different stat bonuses, which is always handy. As you can actually see by that burger store or burger house, that is a memory right there. Memories are, I guess, mini cutscenes that show you a little bit of Cassidy's past. That's some story-related content for any of you that are interested. The icon to the left of the room we're in represents a store. Now, as you can see, once I get inside, it's all locked off because we need to actually take advantage of the waking world, which is, I guess, daytime. And we'll also be getting into that in the next video, but I thought I'd show you what the store looks like in this video. I've exhausted all of those routes. That means the boss has to be somewhere near here. And as you can see, to the left of the room we're in, that icon represents that the boss is there. Remember, the layout of the level changes every time you play it. So if you play this, the boss isn't going to be here for you. It's going to be somewhere else. I'm not going to go to the boss right away, however. I want to be as powerful as possible, and who knows what I'll find. Maybe another weapon. Maybe more bombs. Maybe a better shield. Maybe a better dodge. So I'm going to continue exploring and see what I can find. I use the bomb to open up that path, and I go through it. And there we have a chest. Let's see what we get. That's a better dodge. And of course... We dismantle the older one because we don't need it anymore. And we have a different animation. Now, there's no such thing as the perfect dodge, the perfect weapon. It's all about what playstyle suits you. But sometimes, the better stats are what you're going to need. The time has come to face the boss. Let's see what this thing looks like. And let's learn how we can defeat it. Okay, we're in. Let the fight begin. You cannot damage the boss just by whacking at it. Instead, what you need to do is get close to those bombs, trigger the explosion, and hurt the boss, flip him over on his back, and start whacking at him. It's really that simple. This is the time when you want to use your Lucid Awakening, because that'll give you far more time to attack him. Okay. 
This is one of the attacks that he will do. He'll flip up in the air and launch the thing in you. Try and dodge it as best you can. And he will usually do one type of attack and then you'll get a damage phase. One type of attack and you'll get a damage phase. This is mostly, yeah, this is his easiest attack to dodge. Shoots out a bunch of different water things. Easy to dodge, easy to block, it's fine. Now, because we took the time to explore, because we have a better weapon, we've got a better dodge, all of that stuff, we are absolutely destroying this guy. However, I'm not doing too good either, as I get ambushed by this one type of attack, the tornadoes, and I quickly have to try and escape before I meet an early death. However, I've survived, and the time has come to finish this guy off. Alright, we're not completely done with this guy yet, because since I killed him so quickly, we actually didn't get to see all of his attacks. I played through this a second time, and I will show you the different attacks that were not shown here. As you can see, this is a different build, different melee weapon, different everything pretty much. And in this run, I didn't explore, I didn't do anything, I just tried to get to this guy as quickly as possible. So what you're going to be seeing is that I do very little damage against him. It's going to take way longer to kill this guy. This is one of the hardest of his attacks to dodge. You're going to need to time your dodge at the right moment. Again, that wasn't shown in the previous time that I fought him. So keep note of this attack as well. And finally, we have his most powerful attack, which is that rising to the surface and jumping out. And if you're caught in it, once you fall down, you will be pretty screwed, I have to say. And it's as a result of my being unable to successfully dodge that attack that I end up dying. But anyway, those are all the attacks that this boss has. Remember, once you get your first damage phase, use your Lucid Awakening, freeze time, and go to town on him. After that, be sure to dodge all of his abilities, and you'll be good to go. This is a very easy boss once you know what you're doing. And after watching this video, you should know what you're doing. Remember to use the bombs to get him flipped onto his back, use your abilities every time you can, and be careful. Alright, let's get back to that first run that we had for the majority of the video and see what I did after killing the boss. Okay, we're back. Now, once you go to the next level, your health isn't going to regenerate. So if there is a health potion somewhere, as I saw there, you're going to want to pick that up. So now that that's out of the way and done, we're going to go back to the boss room and we're going to travel to the next level. Now, this is what the waking world is used for. The waking world is going to help you prepare for the next level. However, we're just going to jump jump straight into level 2 without preparing for it and you'll be able to see what happens once you go in unprepared. And we're awake, with all of our progress lost, and everything we had achieved taken away. But don't worry, that's what this game is all about. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to take advantage of the waking world, the key things you should do and should not do that I've learned from. And yeah, with that being said, this has been the first video of the Dreamscaper Guide, introducing you to the world of Dreamscaper, the tutorial, the game mechanics, the first level, and the first boss. My name is Ben, and I hope this was helpful for you. Take care.